with your daughter like that. She's always on the phone. Yeah, she's uh, we're friends on like Snapchat, and Instagram, and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think we're on Instagram. I know we're on Snapchat and Facebook, but she posted a lot of pictures on um, uh, Facebook. She recently just came back from a basketball camp in Atlanta. And she had a lot of pictures up there of stuff they were doing over there. But her and people that she made, um, her and people that she met, and you know, some people that went with her. How's she at basketball? She's pretty good. She's pretty good. What position? Um, she plays four in the center because she's the tallest one on the team. She's five eleven. You know, but, you know, she does pretty good. She does pretty good. She's taller than you. How tall are you? I'm five ten. So she's taller than you. Yes. She gets a little anxious at times. You know. She misses. Some you know, she misses some simple stuff in some games. You know, she just get too anxious and get in a hurry instead of you know just taking the time and using the fundamentals. You know, she get in a hurry. But other than that, she does pretty good. She's pretty good. Did you teach her? No. When she was young? No, I I really didn't have any contact with her until you know when I got out of prison and you know my sister and her mom they talked a lot even when I was in prison. You know they you know you know. Like I said, when I came home, you know, I, I wanted to see her and get to know her. And so her and my sister talked about it. And so, you know, she started out, you know, at first, you know, here and there she might let her. But um, over time, it got to the point where she liked to talk to me a lot more, you know. Did she want to at first? Yeah. How, how old yeah. was she when you guys first oh. started contacting each oh. other again? Yeah. I was just getting home, so she like she like been ready to turn like fifteen. She's fourteen, ready to turn fifteen. So you, you pretty much didn't have contact until she was a teenager, so, yeah. and and yeah. she and wanted to make contact with you when you. Or I were mean, you more like I say, like I say, I, I like I said, I wanted to get to know her, mm -hmm. and you no, know, man, she used to stay with my sister's daughter a lot because they were really good friends mm -hmm. in school, and um, you know, and. My sister told me about it. She was like, you know, it blew her mind because she, like, she wanted to talk to me one day. And she was like, because I used to call my sister when I was locked up. And my sister was like, um, well, you need to talk to your mom. She said, I'm not going to do that, you know, because then your mom. So she talked to her mom about it. And her mom was like, she said, at first her mom was like, no, you know, no. Then she was like, where? Her mom was like, yeah, maybe just once, you know. And I talked to her about five minutes one day, you know. It wasn't very long, you know. And, uh, means a lot, huh? It felt, it, felt, it felt good, you know. Mm -hmm. I said it felt good, you know, just to hear her voice and stuff like that. There. And we uh, we talked about five minutes and we got done. Like I said, then when I came home, we went out to Pizza Hut. Mm -hmm. We ate pizza and talked and had a pretty good time. Yeah, you know, like from there it was like sparing. Like now I get to see it here and there, you know, really didn't get a lot of talking done. And so um, she asked me to start, but I started coming to her games. So I started going to a basketball game. You know, on Fridays and Saturdays, because those were the only days I had off. Because you know, during the week, I worked at night, so I couldn't really go. But on Friday and Saturday, wherever they played, I would go watch her play. That's sweet. Yeah. They owe me was trying to reconnect with her dad. Same situation, you know. <laughs> Dad hadn't been in her life. She was excited. She got her first visitation the weekend prior for not really a visitation, but got to see him mm -hmm. for the first time in a very long time. Mm -hmm. Just the weekend prior to her going missing. Mm -hmm. She was really excited to be with her dad and have that bond again, yeah. just like you and your daughter. Mm -hmm. just got started a little too late for her. She won't be able to enjoy that. He won't be able to enjoy her being there. That's sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is.
Could you imagine that happening to your daughter and never seeing her again? Um, no, you never, you never think about it, or that you could, or that you would, but you never know. Would it hurt if you lost your daughter? Yeah. Definitely. Hurt if I lost either one of my kids. Yeah. You said your son's one? Yeah. What's his name? Jackson. Could you imagine somebody say, uh, 15 year old kid doing something to him and he's helpless. Pretty much like an adult doing something to Naomi, she's helpless. I couldn't imagine. Think about that for a minute. There's nothing, there's, there's, there's nothing to think about. No, just think about it. I mean, it there's me. nothing to think about. What, why, why, why is there something to think about? You wouldn't have to think about that if it was you. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't. So, I mean, I love my son. I love him to death. There, there's nothing to even think about there. If you got to think about that, that's something wrong. I feel like, anyway, if you got to think about that, that's something wrong. There's nothing to think about. There isn't even no second guess in that. Be awful. Maybe he didn't have sex with Naomi. Maybe he just killed her. I didn't do that either. Or she just died while you were right there doing, I don't know, choking, whatever the case may be. And you didn't know what to do. Why would I be choking a child? I'm not saying choking a child. Maybe she oh, choked okay. on okay. something. Okay, okay, okay. Right, that's my, 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 uh, I apologize. Yeah, that's, 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 I'm know. just saying maybe something else happened like an accident while she was sitting in your car and you freaked she's out because she was in, in your car, car and she's your sex offender. Car. She's never been in my car, ever. She's never been in my car. She's never been in my car. Did you take her in the apartment that day since your girlfriend went there? No, I didn't. And you wrapped her in something and put her in your car and you and that's why uh, you I'm pretty sure well, that let I, me let me okay, finish. Go ahead, go ahead. So you wrapped her up in something that's in the apartment and that's why you're so confident we think we won't No you, you think we won't find something in your no, car? No, that's that's not why. I'm confident because she's never been in my car. I'm pretty sure that, you know, if that was the case that I had took her into the apartment, I'm pretty sure that I had wrapped her in anything, bringing her out of that apartment. Someone would notice that. I'm, I'm pretty that's sure. What I, that's what I believe. I'm pretty that's, sure. That's, if, I that her, if I took her in that apartment yes. and, and did anything mm -hmm. to her, if I come out of that apartment with something, that's not a small child. I've seen this child before. If I come out of that apartment with her wrapped in anything, Holding her, toting her, somebody's gonna notice that because it's gonna yes, be odd. Right. Well, what in the fuck is he toting? What is yep. he doing with that? What is that? That was my idea. You know what I thought? I thought you were sitting in your car or around your car and somehow got her to come over to your no. car and she got in and you drove away with her. No. That ain't either. I gotta say, I'm confident because she's never been in that car or anything that I've ever ridden in. Not my car nor Lauren's car. Like I said, the green truck has been out of commission for a while now, so it's, it's not even movable. You didn't wrap her in anything? She wasn't with me. 
like I told you, I'm pretty sure that if that was the case, somebody would have saw that. But it'd be pretty risky. You, I'm pretty sure it would, because that's 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 that is. I don't even like to say it's risky. I don't even know another word to call that, but that's highly noticeable. Like I said, I don't think, you know, anybody could go without noticing something like that. What about your um house in Burton or trailer in Burton? Is it like secluded, surrounded by? It's surrounded by other trailers. Mm -hmm. There's people who live on, all around me. People live all around me. You have any of your family out there in Burton? No. No. Any other property out there, Burton? Mm -hmm. Any others? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me go back. You said, do I have any other family in Burton? Family, property, I have, places um, that you... I have uh, all three of my sisters live in Burton. Mm -hmm. All three of my sisters live in Burton. I have no other properties or anything like that, though. And you're from Burton and grew mm -hmm. up in Burton? Mm -hmm. You know the area well? Fairly well, yeah. There's a lot of remote places up that way. I mean, you get a search team to search them. I mean, but why? I mean, she wasn't found in Bruton. But, you know, I would suggest that That's if why you, felt, you didn't. I would suggest that if you felt that I've done something and took her to Bruton, and however what it is, you may have felt I've done with her while she was there, or done to her while she was there, I would highly recommend that you get you a team or whatever you need to do tracking dogs and get whatever you need to get and search it because like I'm telling you and you don't believe it and like I say you know you got your reasons and your doubts for whatever but Naomi was never with me she's never been with me she was never in my car she was never in that apartment you know why you know why she did why you didn't dump her in Bruton because that would have been too easy for us to figure out. You're from Bruton. You live down here. So you figured, I'd go up to Bruton, do whatever I'm going to do to her. When I get off work, I'll drop her off in another neighborhood close by where it makes it look like somebody from around here did it. Sounds good. But if, if, if I was the type of person to do something like that, I would have dumped her in Bruton. I would have dumped her in Bruton. Why if I, if I was, if I, well, I did not because I didn't do it. That's why I did not. But if I was that type of person, I would have dumped her in Bruton. But I'm not that type of person. Don't you think it would have been smarter to bring her down here and dump her down I mean, here? I don't know. Who thought it would have been smarter to dump her down here? Because you dump her in Bruton. You already know that we know you're from Bruton. Okay, and I mean, you're only, a sex only, offender. Only, only thing, only thing, you're only thing, only thing that would do. But go ahead, finish what you were saying. You're a sex offender. Mm -hmm. You know who she is. Mm -hmm. You live in the same apartment complex. Mm -hmm. You're from Bruton, Alabama. Okay. You have a house up there. Okay. And Naomi is found dead gonna, up in now, Bruton. Now I'm gonna tell you like this here. I'm gonna tell you like this. If I took that child to Bruton, to that trailer. You best believe somebody would have saw that. Somebody seen that, if that was the case. And I'll have to take your word for that. I've never been to Britain. Because I mean, this, this, I've me, never been to your trailer Okay, but it's like, because it's like, you really have, from the time you get in, until you get to the, in the center of the trailer for a while, there's trailers everywhere. People are, people are, you know, they, they would have seen it, believe me. Believe me, if that was the case. Are there trees in this trailer park? Sparingly, sparingly. Oh, so there, there is, there is no, there is, there is no, there is no. Um, where I live, in the trade I live in, there's no such thing as you know, say trying to ease something out, or ease something by, or get by somebody because they, I've, it's very populated right there. So there's no, you know, like I said, it's trees sparingly. It's you know couple of countries maybe but like I said there you can't hide anything no you're not you no know, you can't um, get anything by I think you're hiding behind one damn tree or two so 
What, what, uh, explain to me what you do at your job again. Switch out train cars to be repaired the next morning. What kind of cars? Train cars. Train cars? Yes. You don't do any work on them? No. Just set them up to be fixed the next morning. What, uh, what kind of train cars are these? Are they shipping containers? Tank cars, yes. And tank cars, they fuel. Yeah. Um, yeah Who knows what they put in them? Yeah, pretty much um, ammonia, gas. Uh, oh, shit, oil, um, sulfur, lime. Um, pretty much anything that's carried out down those train tracks in a tank car or what they call a hopper car. It's like a grain car. You know, it comes on that yard to be fixed. Now, what do y'all fix on those cars? Is it just everything? Bearings, brakes, everything. everything. They can actually you see one of the roughest looking. At, just like for example, a wreck car can come in and they can be in the worst shape possible. They're really just you know from the wheels back up look brand new when it leaves. Anything that can be done, replaced, repaired, fixed on the train car, they do it there. And do welding or anything? Well, welding, um, painting, stenciling, I say anything that can be done as far as repairing or restoring a train car is done there. What, uh, what kind of cars are that night that y'all were working and, and getting cars ready? What, were, what kind of repairs were they needing? I mean, it's, it varies. I mean, it's just like we do all shops. You have a welding shop that does all the welding repairs. You have a shop that does the blasting from the blasting the paint off of it to be repainted. You have a shop that does like the interior rubber because some of them have like rubber lining inside of them. Mm -hmm. So you have a shop that puts the rubber inside of them. You have a shop that takes the rubber out of them. I mean, it's just like everything that can be done to this train car or a train car or a tank car because that's all they really take is tank cars is done there that night back to my original question what how many uh, how many cars did y'all get ready to get worked on i don't know like i say it's what, just what's it's, on an average night uh, um average night maybe like four or five hours of straight work like i say you have to how many cars would that be? I mean, do you have you to go get them off the yeah, yard? You get them off the yard, so you can't say really how many cars it'll be because just like I say, you know, you have a list and you have to find these cars to put in this shop. But the car, they don't mean just because you get them, you put them in there. They go in a certain type of way in a certain order because some of them may be worked on will require more work, mm -hmm. some of them may require less. So you put them in the order that it tells you on the paper. I got and you. You find them, the ones that's coming out, you got to put those back on the yard. And the ones that's going in, you got to put them in wherever it tells you to put them in, however it tells you. So there's different shops that you put certain cars in for mm -hmm. certain jobs. Mm -hmm. What kind of like? Do you remember what shops you put cars in that night? Put cars in all. We put we put shop. We put cars in all shops. Like I say, mostly it's going to be the welding shop and the rubber shop every now and then we uh you know may have to put a car in uh sandblast building uh we don't do the rack at night because they have hoses hooked up to the cars to steam them out so right. we don't do the rack at night but other than that it's going to be six seven and eight track and three a and three b uh, we may have to go to the back to line up the lining room this is the back side of the plane. I have to go to the back to line up the lining room or push up from the back for the paint and blast. But other than that, yeah. Um, is that all they do to cars up there? Yeah. It's a repair. Yeah. So would putting evidence 
in one of those cars be a good way to get rid of it inside no, one because of those everything, tankers? Anything that goes out, just like when it comes in, it has to be inspected. It inspected on the way in, they inspect it on the way out. You have two guys that's the inspectors. They look everything outside, everything inside. How do they check the inside? They, the lids. The main way is at the top. They have to check the inside, and they're the only ones that can seal it. Can't no one else seal it. So when he checks the inside, make sure everything is dry, make sure there's no water in it, make sure there's nothing, because there can't be anything in it when it goes back where it's going. He seals it. Does he have a seal he puts on it to say it's every been seal, every, every, seal, every seal that they put on, they write it down on some little log that they keep. So. Yeah. Do you have access to him? No, I don't. I work at night. Um, we can't sit anything out and besides even if that was the case to try to do something like that when CSX comes to pick it up if it's not on the list they're not going to take it so you know they do all the sealing in the daytime I don't work in days do you have access to CSX train yard no I don't CSX how do you train, get the CSX train yard is in Plumbers and they drop everything off to us on the track beside the plant oh. So everything y'all work on is dropped off? It's dropped off to us, yes. So y'all don't have to go? No, we don't have to go anywhere. No. I gotcha. Hmm. Let's talk about that night some more. How, how long did you drive around? Not very long. To turn a couple corners and head on back in. What other areas did you go to besides where we know you were? I don't just you know whenever I did do that, I didn't you know just constantly ride around. If I, if I found some of my first go around, it was good. If I didn't, I went home. I just didn't hit neighborhood after neighborhood. You know, um, like I said if I found somebody and, and they were willing to continue to do whatever we were doing, you know, I would go see them or, you know, stop by and see them. But other than that, you know, I would just continue just to ride all around and look for something like that. I said, if I found it, cool. If I didn't, like it. Wasn't a big deal? No. So Naomi wasn't pregnant? I don't know. I have no idea. I've never been with her, so I wouldn't know. You've never been with her sexually? At all, period. I'm still having a problem with that whole bridge I'm thing. I'm pretty sure that if, if so, for some reason, like I say, you know, you keep asking or saying so she wasn't pregnant or did she get pregnant and this that and the other like I said I'm pretty sure that you know uh, if that was the case um, you would be able to find that out um, if she was pregnant and, and if I had somehow some way been with her you could find that out too if she was pregnant in that case um, but as I've told you before, I've never had no dinner with Naomi. Sexually or none, no. What's the deal with the bridge? What about it? Why do you stop in that area? What did I tell you? You told me you pulled on that road, drove straight across it, and kept on going. There you go. But I know that's not true. Okay. You say it's not? I know it's not. Okay. Because right. you were stopped in that area for almost two minutes. Because hmm. what you don't know is there's a camera on the other side of that bridge. Okay. So I know how long it takes somebody to go past camera one to camera two. Okay. 
I'm not going to ask you a question like that unless I know the answer. I think you'll ask me whatever it is that you feel like it's going to get an answer out of me or try to, you know. You know Look I, at me. I'm not going to ask you a question like that unless I know the answer. Okay, but my thing is, if you got all these cameras and you say you see me stop, and you asking me these questions about, you know, did I do this or did I did I throw over? Did I do this here? If you got all these cameras and you say that I did this, then you should have footage of me getting her out of the car or, or whatever it is that was. If she's supposed to have been with me or if I was supposed to have done this, you need you supposed to have all this. Me dumping her on whatever. If you got all these camera angles that you say you got. Because if I you just say, told you. I just told you what I got. Okay, you say you got the car. Okay, you said then what you what you just told me said you got another camera angle, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so like, I mean, so this other camera angle don't show nothing else but the car. I because just it, told you. I can tell you when you turn on that road. And there's another camera down the road. Mm -hmm. And I know how long it takes to drive from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You're around that bridge for a minute and a half, two minutes. And I can prove that. Really? A minute and a half, two minutes? Just as sure as I'm sitting here looking at you right in your eyes, I can prove that. For a minute and a half, two minutes? And if you think I'm lying, that's a, that's, a, that's a long time to be sitting around a bridge. Sure is. Were you changing the radio station, or were you just oh, chilling up there? On I didn't stop at it. So now you got to tell me why you're sitting there. I was not at a bridge. I didn't stop it. Stop right past it? If you want to get real technical, maybe you stopped right past on the other side of the bridge. Okay. I mean, you still saying. I can prove that. So you got to answer that question. I don't know what you're talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. No. Oh, you know. No, I don't. You know, because no. I can prove that, okay. and you know I'm not lying. Okay. I don't know what you're doing. I mean, you said you know I'm not lying. I don't know what you're doing. Like I said, I feel like you'll tell me anything or say anything to me to try to get me to say something that I know nothing about. Listen, I'm not lying to you. I can prove you were on that bridge right. or right there by that bridge for a minute and a half, two minutes. Okay. 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 So, what were you doing? I didn't stop. That's not true. It's my, not true, th really. my, th my thing is, my thing is this. Like I say, if you say I stopped at this bridge and I was there for a minute and a half, two minutes, something, something. I mean, if I got out of that car and I was doing anything, shouldn't you see that? I already explained it. Explain, explain it again, please. Go ahead, man. You can't, the camera right there, you can't exactly see the bridge you and what's going you, on on the bridge. You can see you go up the bridge, stop, well you don't see you stop, but you don't come out the other side. So you stop. Two minutes later, then you come out the other side. Okay, but earlier when I said it, you said it was distorted and you couldn't tell. I didn't say distorted, I said that it was blocked by, the view was okay, blocked. Well, she maybe, said maybe there was an obstruction. Too. Is what she okay. said. Maybe. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm just saying that you go up, don't see you, two minutes later, then you come out. And what you're that's telling long, me that's too. A, that's a long time to be at a bridge. And two what minutes. you're telling me too, also that's not true, is that you only turned onto that road one time, drove up in that neighborhood, and came back out and left. That's not true. No, had you been drinking that night? Mm -hmm. I don't really drink. Do you do any kind of drugs? No, not 
was wrong either. Whatsoever. Not even marijuana or anything. You got to be able to answer that question, man. Stop asking it. No. Mm -hmm. You're tell you're giving me an answer that's not the truth is what you're doing. And you know it and I know it. Now is your time. I'm not talking about when we walk out that door, we're done. You're not going to have another chance to tell us your side of the story. You, I told you, I can prove you stopped right around that bridge. Okay. And then, not only that, Robert, you stopped on there one time when you're coming out, coming back towards Detroit, and a car passes you, and you got spooked, and you go back to Detroit. And it's all on video, this part. You take a left, go down, and pull right in a driveway. Wait just a second, back up. You come back, turn back on the road, and go back to the bridge. And that's when you threw her body over. Okay. Sounds good. Am I wrong? Yeah. How? Because I never stop. How do you explain the minute and a half, two minutes that you're right there? I don't know what you're talking about, a minute and a half, two minutes. Well, I'm telling you, that's what happened. Okay. It's on video, Robert. Okay. Now's the time to tell me. Tell you what? What you did. I ain't did nothing. Why would somebody stop at, at that place? I can tell you. Like I said, I didn't stop at no bridge. You stopped right past it? I didn't stop at the bridge. Did you stop right before it? I didn't stop at the bridge. Past it, before it, after it, I didn't stop at the bridge. You're asking me the same thing no matter how you put it. I did not stop at the bridge. Well, you might have a... You might not think you're lying because you say... I'm saying you stopped on the bridge and you stopped on the other side of the bridge. I mean, that's why I just said, you know, you saying before, on, after. I said, I did not stop. Did you stop anywhere on Ashland? It's stop sign. Just right there at the stop sign. The only place you stopped. The whole street. Yep. Robert. What's up? There's no denying that you stopped around that or on that bridge. There's right. no denying it. Okay. None. Okay. None whatsoever. Okay. You you got to explain that somehow, man. Yeah, I got to explain it. I didn't stop. I told you that. But the evidence says you did. What part of that don't you understand? I didn't stop. Robert, the evidence says you stopped. I hear what you're saying. I did not stop. Well then, what did what did you do for a minute and a half? Tell me, because I'm I, 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 mean, I, I, I just don't said get I didn't it. stop. You still trying to ask me what I did for a minute and a half? I didn't stop. I just, how do you explain that time gap? I don't know how you explain it. I told you I didn't stop. All right. I'm gonna draw. A diagram of the little area and I want you to show me where you drove. I'm telling you where I drove. I did not stop. So therefore, let me draw, draw, draw what up. 
What are you, what are you doing it up? I, I just know. told you what the road did. I followed the road all the way in. The road curves, goes down into a neighborhood. If you keep going straight, it comes to an opening where there's houses in a semicircle. It's just an opening where you can turn around. I turned around and came right back out. So what is there to draw? There's nothing to draw. You drove up in there and drove out and left. Yes. Okay. Well, why can I see your car on video pulling on to Detroit and pulling in that driveway and then coming back onto the road? Why can I see that? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not bullshitting you. Okay. What's up with that? You tell me. Because I'm not the one driving I'm, you down. And I'm, car, and I'm not the one that you are. You got to explain this, not me. Your life's on the line, not mine. I didn't stop the car. You stopped the car. You also pulled out and pulled into that driveway. You know good and well you did. Why'd you do it? Well, I didn't do it. I didn't. Then why is your car doing it? I is a fucking I alien driving your car? I may have been. You said nobody else drives your car. They don't. But hell, I mean, if an alien gets it, I'm pretty sure he'll like ain't. You said you're in your car at that time. Yeah. And you're in that area. So, who the fuck else is driving it? I have no idea. Robert's driving the car. You said so yourself. So make me understand what you were doing. Tell me, now's your chance. Tell you what? What you were doing. Nothing. That that's what you're gonna go with? I mean, I'm you got a dead twelve year old girl. Okay. And that's what uh, you're gonna go with? And I'm sorry that she is. Yeah. When you're charged with murder? How about this? She look the same? She don't look the same. Not the same at all. I say I'm sorry about that, man. But like I say I have nothing to do with that at all. Nothing. No emotion. You're just a cold-hearted killer. I'm trying to tell you, I have nothing to do with this. I didn't hurt this child. I didn't kill this child. I didn't put my hands on this child. I didn't pick this child up, take her anywhere. Nothing. So what's the human blood on your car? They just tested it. It's, it's positive for human blood. Okay, but my what thing is, it? okay, please find out. Please, because I... Do you know I, how quickly they're working on this for this okay, case? I, I want them to get it just as fast mm -hmm. as you want them to get it. Because, like I said, if there's blood on that car like you say it is, it doesn't belong to this child. Who's it doesn't. Him? Hell if I know. I have no idea. People don't usually just drive around with blood on their car. Well, I never knew it was blood on the car. Not something new to me. Yeah, because you, you would have wiped side. it off. It says on the passenger side, what? Rear wheel? Right in front of the rear wheel. Uh, so I don't know about all that. Uh, so I know it's uh, a scratch on the driver's side right around the rear wheel. You know why the blood's there? I can tell you why. Why is it there? Because you had her in the back seat on the passenger side. Uh -huh. That's why you stopped on the bridge the first time. Because uh -huh. she's on the passenger side, you're uh -huh. going to throw her over on that side okay. but the truck comes so you leave you come back she's on the passenger side on this side and you throw her over on that side that's why okay test that blood there'll be tests oh we're testing oh, I, know I, know I know it you don't even have to tell I, it i know I, I know it'll it. be done I know, I, I know it i know it's gonna be done i know it's gonna be done i know it's gonna be done but when it comes back negative and don't and it has nothing to do with this can i please get a copy of that no, if you're not the suspect and it's not her blood, then I'm not giving you a copy. Okay, I mean, I, but I, just, I mean, but it's, I believe it's, it's you're not, the suspect, and once you're in jail, you'll not, get a copy of all this stuff. It's not. It's not. Like I said, I had nothing to do with that. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I truly hate that. But you know, that right there, not a normal reaction. 
people don't usually stare that hard because I mean it's just it's, it's, it's sickening. as you are. It's no, sickening. it's not sickening. You're enjoying that. No, I have, well, no, the hell yeah. I'm, I'm. You're enjoying I that. I promise you, I give you my people word. People usually turn that picture over and they can't even look at it. It's I mean, so awful. I, I just want y'all to get that tested because, like I said, that is not her blood on my car. That is not hers. Where it comes from, I don't know. But it's not hers. You, you don't even care. No. Nope. I understand that you may feel and think that no, I, I don't, don't, you don't give a shit. No, okay, that's just what I was going to say. You may feel and think that I don't give a shit. But as I told you before, I mean, I hate this happening to this child. But that's not my doing. What's, 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 not doing what's going to happen is they're going to know that this is how you were acting. This is the denial, the lying, you know, pompous kind of attitude that you're giving. How is it pompous? Listen, but when you go up there and, and we're going to prove this case beyond reasonable doubt, we're going to prove this case. Mm -hmm. And when you get up there and you're like, you know, begging, judge, please don't give me the death penalty. I, I regret. I feel remorse. I'm sorry to the family. You know what? This right here is going to come into play because this is your true being right here. You don't give a shit that that okay. little girl this is, this is, is dead. Okay. And you keep saying this. I understand, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, Believe you're me. You're going to be begging. I, I hear, I understand exactly what you're saying. But I'm telling you, this has nothing to do with me. That's why I want you to get out and I'd be glad when it's done to prove that that blood on that car does not belong to this child. That's why I never cleaned my car because I figured this would happen. I never cleaned, I figured this would happen to the point of it was going to be search, scan, screen, however. You figured this was going to happen because yes. you knew, yes. Yes. You knew yes. we would find I, out who you it's, were. It's not a thing of, okay, somebody you found out who I was, you found out I did it. I already knew that when I told them folks and I let them know that, okay, you know, when he asked me, he said, well, you know, in the sex offenders in the area, I told him straight up, I said, no, I don't. But I've been accused of a sex offense and I've registered as a sex offender. You were so, convicted of a sex offense, well, weren't you? I basically had to cop out to it here. Like I told you, I didn't have any damn help to, you know, prove anything. Shit, the public defender that gave me didn't do shit. He didn't ask no questions and cross reference shit. So I was fucked from the moment they gave him to me. Innocent. Excuse me? You were innocent. Yeah. I just couldn't have no I just didn't have no way of proving it. Like right now. That is you have no has, way to prove that, has, that, that. But that, that that has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. That blood that's on that car does not belong to that child. I say, you know. What do you think the jurors are gonna think when your car they see your car driving around just like I told you? Yeah. What would I you think? I mean, I probably have second guesses. I probably think twice. That guy's about. look. That guy's waiting to yeah. dump a body. I don't know what he's waiting to do, but you no, know, I probably have second guesses about it. But well, when you tell the whole story and it gets to that part, and you're sitting there driving around in that area, and you're up by the bridge, you get spooked when a car comes on there. You pull off, then you go back. What do you? What would you think? I wonder. Yeah. What the hell was going on? And then the, she, Naomi, is found down there? Uh, mm. nice and you can't tell me why you stopped there? Now's the time to tell me. I, like I told you, man, I had nothing to do with this child. Nothing. Nothing. I never put my hand on this child. When you're charged with this murder, and you will be, the jury's going to see all this and see how you act. You're very cocky. How am I cocky? The, how, how? Because how? you're very adamant that she wasn't in your car. She wasn't. That you never touched her. I didn't. Or anything like that. We won't find anything of hers in your car. Because maybe she was never not. in my car. You, maybe not. Because you probably wrapped her in something. 
Like I told that's you. why you well, know like we won't you. find anything I mean, in your car. No, that's that's not it. But like I told you, if I had done that, how in the heck would I get her from upstairs to downstairs without somebody seeing? I mean, even I'm even, not saying I mean, you even, took her even, up in your apartment. Where would I have done that then? There's plenty of places, man. Uh, not around there, is it? Plenty yeah, of not, places. Not, not, not what I've been seeing. That's a wide open area. That's a wide open area. You cleaned your, you could have cleaned your car. No, I didn't clean it. It's not coming. We haven't seen your car till today. Well, I mean, like I say, it looked the same way it looked from the first day they questioned me and looked at my car before I went to get the brakes put on it. So, I mean, is that how you want the jury the jury is to, to I'm see you and jury, portray you as just jury, a cold-hearted, blooded, no-soul, killed a 12-year-old girl and jury, just threw her on the side of a road like a piece of trash, Robert? The jury is going to view it. I mean, I'm pretty sure they will feel some type of way when they see this and hear whatever it is they have to hear. But, as I've said, I didn't do that. You did. You know it. Okay. I know it. She knows it. Without a shadow of a doubt. Is that what you want the jury to think of you? The jury's going to think whatever, but like I'm telling you, I didn't do this. I did not do this. I did not murder this child. I didn't murder Naomi. I don't believe you, Robert. You can't tell me why you were around that bridge for a minute and a half, two minutes. You can't tell me that. And you lie, you've, you've lied throughout this thing. And you won't admit that you're lying. When I know for a fact you're lying, and I can prove you're lying. And I've even told you what you did. You know what you did. And you still won't admit that I'm right. Talk to me. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened to the child. Robert, you're the only one that can tell me what happened to her. Nobody else on this face of this earth can tell me what happened besides you. I don't know. I said I didn't do it to her. I didn't harm her. I didn't put my hands on her. Man, you have no soul if you can't tell me what you did to this girl. I did not do I'm telling you what I did. Nothing. I didn't put my hands on her. I didn't touch her. I didn't pick her up. I didn't take her nowhere. Then what were you doing for a minute and a half?
I need the bathroom. Yeah. You want to go right now? Yeah, you want to take me to the water. Yeah, hold on just a second. Tell me what happened. Tell me about the minute and a half on the bridge. About a minute and a half. Well, how long do you think it did it take? I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, is that is that how you want it, Dan? Yeah. You don't show any kind of remorse, Robert. I'm telling them, I had nothing to do with that. I had nothing to do with that. Nothing. Do you, Do you see the set of circumstances of that? Yeah, that, I, I see exactly. But what it's about. beyond just. Circumstance. You leave the house. That's where the little girl was taken from. Mm -hmm. We can agree on that, right? You go to Bruton, right? No. You come back from Bruton. Mm -hmm. Okay. You go back to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, you go where? Come back. To Pensacola. Mm -hmm. You remember when we talked earlier? Mm -hmm. I asked you about Lincoln Park. Mm -hmm. Even went into it and said, west of Highway 29, north mm -hmm. of the interstate. Nope, mm -hmm. nope, ain't never been over there. Nope. Ain't been there. Don't go over there. Nope. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you've been sitting up here for a while and talking to Agent Enfinger and, well, yeah, I was over there. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Stopped at the stop sign. Right? Mm-hmm across the bridge, 
right? Mm -hmm. Drive it into the neighborhood, mm -hmm. turn around, come back out, mm -hmm. okay? Turn west. It's obvious. See, so pull into the driveway, back back up. The cameras are actually pretty good. I mean, no doubt it's your car. No doubt. And it makes you look bad because you sit in here and, well, nope, wasn't over there. Well, yeah, I was over there. Yeah, I was driving around. And you can't explain it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to look bad for Robert when you're in front of a jury and they see the lies that you tell. I'm not saying that you're a bad dude, bad things happen to good people. But you've got to be able to explain what happened, the circumstances surrounding it, you know. I mean, you can shake your head. Oh, no, no, no. I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're but, saying. I mean, you know the technology. You watch TV. You see all the shit. We can put you at the scene. Video. And we can also put you there by your phone. Right? We can agree on that. Mm -hmm. Okay? You admit to being there. So, you probably have the better chance of winning the fucking lottery than you do of being where a girl is picked up mm -hmm. and where she is dropped off, mm -hmm. murdered, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. disposed of. Basically like a piece of trash. Thrown over, half naked, like a piece of trash. It makes you look like just one sorry fucking bastard. Like you have no remorse. I mean, what are your kids going to think about all this? How many kids do you have? Two. Two kids. How old's your oldest? Seventeen. Okay. It's going to look bad. It's going to look bad. Are they still in school? Um. 17-year-old be a senior this year and I have a one-year-old. What do you think their friends are going to say about them, about their dad? I don't know, but I don't, you know, I don't know. Like I, said, I don't even think most of her friends even know of her dad. Where she stay at? She stays in Bruton. She stays in Bruton. Yeah. Bruton's a small town. Yeah, but the thing about that is I've never really had a relationship, relationship with him. With him. No. It'll get out. I mean, it'll get out. It's a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows everybody's business. Wouldn't you agree? Okay. So, I mean, we've already established Robert left at the time that she was abducted. She was murdered. We can put you there at the scene, at the dump. Your actions inside your car, in that area, to the average person, that's what we're talking about. The average person, when they see this, they say, what the fuck is going on here? We see a car pull in. We see it go into the neighborhood. It comes back out. Car comes by, gets spooked. Whatever the case may be, I got it all fucked up because I don't watch the video that much, but I get the gist of it. That you pulled up, I saw that part of it, where you pulled out, went west on Detroit, pulled into the driveway, right? Backed out, went back into the neighborhood again, mm -hmm. okay? They're 100%, not a shadow of a doubt, that's Robert's car, okay? Nobody has done this but you, you brought this all on yourself, okay? Can we agree on that? Do you realize the... I, I, I know, when I say this, all of this... Talk to me, brother, talk to me. Sounds real fucked up, but listen to me. Honestly, me, all bullshit, jokes aside, Oh, bullshit aside, okay? Honestly, I never took this child. I never took Naomi. She was never in my car. Like I say, you know, you say you see blood or whatever. Like I say, when you, you have it tested, 
you'll find that it doesn't belong to this child. Okay? Did you kill somebody else? No. Come on. No, shit, no. no. I didn't kill anyone. He's the one who found the blood on the floor. I mean, I didn't kill anyone. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm not, I didn't kill anyone. Did you throw her over the bridge while she's still alive? No. That's what I'm telling you. She was never in my car. I'd never throw her over. But you, you can't explain. Did you understand when they were telling you that there's a camera here? Yes, I understand I'm lovely, There's one right here I understand. by I understand. the intersection. Okay. We can that. see how long it takes okay. cars to go by. Yeah, we see that you stop. Okay. It, it's over I a minute. I did all that. I did all that stopping. I did all that stopping. Why? I did all that. Why? But I did not dump this body. Was somebody else with you? No, no one else was with me. You were by yourself. But I was told that something would be there. What? It wasn't, it wasn't this when I looked. Well, I didn't see this when I looked. What was supposed to be there? It was, just, it was supposed to be uh, as far as what exactly is this supposed to be something to benefit me. I like that, that. Something what? to benefit me, I guess. I'm, Some I'm, dead I'm, pussy? Fuck no, I don't hope not. But um, it was just supposed to be something and I should have kept it. It was a note for me. It was a note on the car. All honesty, all bullshit aside. I said I never picked her up, never took her anywhere. And it says something to benefit you. From Naomi? No. 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 It, Who's it from? It didn't it didn't have no name from nobody to, or to nobody. It was just on the car. That is the absolute worst fucking story I, I've, I've ever heard. I'm, my I'm, life. I'm, and I'm telling you the honest they got the truth. That, that when, is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Listen to me. Just okay, listen to I'm listening. Me. Here. Just listen to me. Let me hear when this. It's something to benefit you. Okay. How's it going to benefit you? Monetarily? It didn't say. It just said something to benefit you. Was it a female? Was it a male? I don't know. Are you queer? I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. You don't know like, if you're queer or not? I'm not. I'm not a queer. I thought you said, was it a queer? I mean, no, I'm not a queer at all. You fucked her, didn't you? No, sir. No, sir. You stuck your dick in that little no, twelve-year-old sir. girl. No, sir. Did she fight back? I don't. I don't know what she did. I didn't do it to her. This is what I'm trying to get you to see. It's just something to benefit me. You know when all and this it told comes me, out. And it to told me. me. And it told me where to look. When I went there, I was uh, going to look. Tell me what it said. Tell me what the note said verbatim. I want to hear what it said. Something to benefit you. Okay, just and it where, told me where to go. End of the pot of gold. There's a rainbow hitting it, on that it, bridge. It, it, did it, you it, know where to go? That, what? It the told fuck? me where to go. What what, what where did it tell you to go? Across from the the D T Christian Center. Across from D T Christian Center at the bridge. Something to benefit you. Where was this note left out? It was left right in the corner of my uh, mirror on the driver's side. Where? In Pensacola or Bruton? In Pensacola. Okay. That's bullshit because it time? fucking rained. It's this much of it hanging out, all honesty. This much of it hanging out. This is when I left. To go yes. where? Where were you going? To work. Why didn't you drive over there then? Because I didn't see it till later. You had plenty of time. You were only going to meet a friend. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't see it till later. When so, I went to work, not when I went to meet the friend. And that's how it says something to benefit you. Is it a fucking Christian fortune center. cookie? I have no idea. It says something to benefit you. Was it a handwritten? Yes. Did it say it when to meet meet there? I mean, it, just, it just says something to benefit you. Okay, so you. you find the shit at Christian one o'clock in the afternoon when you start going and to work. It was at one o'clock. What time it was did you later. go? One thirty. It was when I went back at like four. So when you came back at four, it's in your mirror. I mean, this this is when I noticed it in my mirror. At four. It may have been earlier, but I didn't notice it until I went back so to work out the four. Tell me what is going to be there. You're talking I about have, you, I have no listen idea. to me. No it's idea. at four o'clock. So in what? Nine more hours you decide that you're gonna run by the I didn't see it until later. I didn't see it until we we were done working. And I went out to my car and that's when I seen it that evening. 
Matter of fact, so you, just, was, matter, you just said that you saw fact, it when it was at your house. See, that's another fucking lie. I, can, I said it was sticking out. I didn't say I'd seen it when I was there. I said it had to be put there because when I was when I left earlier, I didn't see anything. When I left earlier, I didn't see anything. Yes, sir. And that is the absolute silliest bullshit that I've ever heard. Did something to benefit me. I look. That sounds like a fortune cookie that, to me. Me? No. It was a handwritten note. Piece of paper. Okay, let me ask you this. Did it have directions to get there? It, no, it didn't. It just it said it across just from the from DT Christian Center. Christian Center. How do you know what DT Christian Center is? Because it's about a bunch of church there before. You've been to church over there? Yeah. I asked you earlier if you've ever been to Lincoln Park west of Highway but 29 okay, north you, of you, the interstate. Okay, but I didn't know that was Lincoln Park. Well, I went all, all, further all past I it when all, I said... All I, know, all I know is the church is over there as far as what the neighborhood is called okay. and what street it's on. I don't know anything about that. But when I said Lincoln Park, you said, no, I don't know where that's at. And I said the area west of Highway 29, because we made sure that you went up to Nine Mile Road, you went west on Nine Mile Road to Highway 29, and you go to work to Bruton north on 29, right? Mm -hmm. And I said the area west of 29, north of the interstate. Nope, I've never been there before. Nope. Yeah, I said that. Not that I said that. Okay. And this was after you drove around over there, right? Mm -hmm. That Wednesday night mm -hmm. when you got off of work, or in the Thursday morning, however you want to, past midnight, mm -hmm. you got off work and you drive back to Pensacola. And then you drive around over there. You know that absolutely, you would have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than you would just a haphazardly, randomly stop there. Can we agree on that? Mm, possibly, yes. Okay. You see how silly that sounds? Very. Do you know when this heats up, when this goes into the media, that they're going to paint you out to be an absolute fucking devil. Yeah, I know it. Okay. And we're back on to that small town Bruton of what they're, how they're going to treat your daughter. Holy shit. That's my dad. Look what my father did. What's your son going to grow up into the thinking? What about your girl over here? Uh, She's going to think you're an absolute monster. And she has your baby. What's Yolanda going to think? I've been fucking this motherfucker. He just killed somebody. He just killed a 12-year-old girl. We both know that's a lie. They're going to stand you up in court, make you out to be the biggest monster on the face of this earth. I didn't kill a child. Is Weekend and as crazy as all this shit is, no. I never touched her. I never killed her. The short time that I've sit in this room, I can tell that you're a person that doesn't accept responsibility for their actions. It's not that I don't respect and accept responsibility for my action, but I didn't. I didn't. Your anything. victims that you went to prison for, you keep saying that you were innocent. Because I was. Both of them. Yes. How can okay. This is my thing. If somebody is supposed to be raping you and another individual at the same time, how is that possible? Well, my answer to that would be you may get it one time, but the second time somebody accuses you of something 
and it's where the smoke is fire. But I'm saying, like I said, but this is supposed to be at the same time, at the same place, not here one time and not here this time. This is supposed to be at the same time. The first time that you got arrested for an incident was what year? This was the same. This is the only one. The same person. time. The first time I got arrested for an incident. This was the Probably same. Right. This was the same time. What year? Ninety-eight. Okay, you went to prison for that. Yeah. How long did you do? Fifteen years. Okay, you got out. Yeah, in two thousand thirteen. Were you charged with another one after that? No, this time. This is so I'm telling you. Both of them were supposed to be at the same incident. time, the same night, the same rate simultaneously. That's same what victim. At. Yeah, two different people, but it's supposed to be like. It's like you're sitting here, someone else is sitting here. It's supposed to be okay. I'm raping you while this one is sitting here. Then I have to rape you. I'm raping this one while this one is sitting here. Was it in the same house? Did the victims know each other? We all went to school together. Okay. Mm. So you're saying, saying that you didn't have sex with them, or you did have sex with them? I've been with both of them before. In the past. But nothing was said until the girl found out she was pregnant. I've been with like the one that said she was pregnant. We like I said we messed around the whole How old summer. Were you? I'm thirty eight. How old were you? I was eighteen at the time. How old was she? What about that one? Both of them. Yes. They were and I was a senior. I had just graduated actually. They were going to What'd you do, mate? Mama's man? Uh, maybe just like one of these girls. I mean, this is the thing about it. Her in preliminaries, her is like we she just did so much for the kids that hung out. Her was never there whenever we hung out there. But she made it like, you know, she and before we went into preliminaries, she couldn't tell me from three other black dudes because she didn't she never seen me unless she looked at a picture of me before she came in there. Other than that, she didn't even know who I was because she was never home whenever we were there. Yeah. She was never home when we were there. I mean, I wasn't the only one that went over there. It was a group of us that I always went over there and hung out. And I say nothing was ever done out of the, you know, to disrespect or hurt anyone. But, you know, she made it like she was just, you know, did so much for us. And all. so you were never there. But I'm supposed to have done this to both of y'all at the same time. But nothing is said until she get pregnant. So they're the same age as your daughter? They are... No, they're grown. They were, they were at that time. At the time, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. What would you think about somebody doing that to your 12-year-old daughter? I couldn't begin to imagine. What do you think her mom was feeling right now? Probably every emotion in the world that can be felt. Anger. Guilt. Leaving home alone. Angry that somebody killed her baby. Sad that she's gone. She lived right next door to the person that did it. And there wasn't shit that she could do for her daughter. You think her mama deserves all this? No one does. No one does. You think her mama deserves closure? Her heart was ripped out of her body. That investigator right there, six foot five, 250 pounds, was about to shed a tear telling that mama that her baby's gone. We couldn't help that mama find her baby because she was dead.
Somebody took her from her house. Killed her. And threw her on the side of the road like she was a fucking dog. And she'll always have to look at her other two kids and never get to see that third one again. I couldn't imagine what she's going through. Every single day that she wakes up, she's going to think it's a fucking dream. And then she's going to realize it's real. I will never get my 12-year-old daughter back. She'll never get to see her graduate. She'll never get to see her grandkids. It was all taken from her. And that's basically what you just did to your daughter. She's gonna have to live with that every single fucking day. Every day. She's gonna wake up. What in the fuck did my dad do? He is a fucking monster. And I share his name. Your little boy's gonna grow up and learn the truth. That baby's mama deserves some closure. Cause she'll never, ever get to see her 12 year old daughter again, ever. The bad thing about it is she'll never get to see that last closure of what she looked like. I pray that she doesn't have to see that child in the funeral home. That doesn't even look like that pretty little girl. Skin slipping off, hair falling off her head, animals eating on her. She'll never get to grow up and do things that she wanted to do. Hang out with her friends, go to school, find a boyfriend, get married, have kids. And I'm sure your daughter's got love for you. Because you'll always be her daddy. Always. But you've taken her innocence from her. Because everybody in Bruton will always tell that story what her daddy did. The monster that he is. Absolute fucking monster. I can't imagine what went through your mind, what you were doing. The sheer fucking terror 
that that little girl was going through. Absolute terror. She knew that she was going to fucking die. Knew it. But she stared her killer in the fucking eyes. She probably knew that her time was up. Knew it. Her time had come. She's going home to Jesus. She never deserved what she got. And what she got was tenfold. Tenfold. I'm talking about a 12 year old girl. That should still be at home walking her bulldog with her two little brothers that thought the world of her. And her mom out there busting her fucking ass, working to put food on the fucking table for her kids. You know the guilt that she's got for this? Because she wasn't at home, she was at fucking work. Summer's here, kids are home playing. She, 12 year old girl, playing the mother role, taking care of the kids so her mother could go to work. She comes back home with her two little brothers after walking that dog. tells her little brother I'll be right back. She walks out that door. And her mother's worst nightmare came fucking true. She met you. What that little girl did to deserve that. Treated like absolute garbage. I feel bad for her mother. I feel bad for Naomi's two brothers. I feel bad for your family. I feel bad for your 17 year old daughter because she's hitting that age right now as a young adult. She's not that much older than Naomi. She's going to be a senior this year. It's going to be the hardest year of her life. Why? Look at me. What did she do to deserve this, Robert? I know you don't believe me. But 
Woo. See, I thought we were getting somewhere, and you pulled some I, fucking I, I know bullshit you don't, I, I know you don't believe me. Yeah, fuck no, I don't believe you. Fuck no. You cannot tell me y'all are next door fucking neighbors. She goes missing that afternoon, and you're driving around where she's dumped at. Not only driving around, you fucking stop. You come back by, you're over there for like nine fucking minutes. Nine. Doing circles. You know why? Because you're fucking nervous. You don't know where to put her. Because you don't know the area. Because you're from Bruton. And you couldn't have dumped her ass up in Bruton because they'd have known it was you. Because you knew we were going to be out there looking. And when we come across you, that you're the sex offender from Bruton. And you would have been the first person that we'd look for. So you had to bring her back. She had to be dumped in Pensacola. Couldn't imagine the stress building up in you over there that night coming home. Fuck. Police gonna get behind me? Am I gonna get fucking stopped? I got a fucking body in my car. Where in the fuck am I gonna put her? Here, let me, right here. This is where I'm gonna do it. And then you see those fucking headlights shine? Goddamn, here comes a car. Holy shit. Let me get out of here. Fuck. Still got her in the car. Gotta get rid of her. Do or die. I gotta do it now. Here we go. Stop the car. Let me get this bitch out of the car. Fuck it. Right here. Throw her in the water. Fuck it. Dump gone. I got away with it. I'm done. Stress go away then. I bet you shit when Lauren called and said, Holy shit, the FBI's over here going door to door. sex offenders because it's a 12 year old girl fuck it now I don't know no sex offenders but I'm one Mr. Howard we need to talk to you at the sheriff's office again oof there goes that stress again Walked out of here this afternoon. They got him snowed. You now we followed you all the way from Bruton. Mm -hmm. All the way to the house. Right row. Get out of the car. Got it. Made. Going back upstairs. Row. Who are all these people? Right row. Got the right person. We don't need you to say anything. They're gonna make you out to be the monster on the stand. The only thing that you can say is, I didn't mean for this to happen. And that's what's gotta come out of you tonight. I didn't mean for it to happen. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I made a fucking mistake.
all is not lost. But tonight is the night. I'm going to help you through it. I'm going to help you through it. To take that weight off your heart. You're going to help me through it. Yep. How are you going to help me through it? Because we're going to talk about it. So I give that moment closure. And let her know that you're not the fucking monster that everybody makes you out to be. Because right now I'm your only saving grace. You know what kind of shit it looks like on a 12 year old kid? They want to put you to fucking death. You hear me? You will sit in a fucking prison for the rest of your life, never knowing when your fucking time card is punched. Where they're gonna give you that dirty needle. How can you help me? I can help you by us sitting here talking to it, and you show some goddamn remorse. That's why. Because you sit up in here like you're a goddamn monster. I don't know nothing about nothing. Sergeant Coxwell, I don't know shit. We know better. I understand what you're saying, but I think, you know, y'all, I mean, y'all sit here and y'all look at my demeanor. I mean, don't think one time that I don't give a shit, I don't care. I mean, I know my year you may see or feel that my attitude or the way I may speak or the things I may say may show different. But don't think one for one second that I don't give a fuck now. You feel bad? You damn right I feel bad. I mean I told them, I mean, I, I really hate that this happened. Why did really it happen? We're we're look look at me. Look at me. We're we're past all that shit, Robert. We're we're past what that. What kind of help can I get? What kind of help can you get? Yes. Let me make this to you. I can't make you any deals or promises, but what I can do is tell the state attorney that Robert Howard came in here and he owned up to his mistake. Because there's no ifs, hands, or buts. We got the right <laughs> fucking person, okay? And we can prove it. something for sure and right. I mean, I don't want to spend the rest of my life in prison. Okay. You know, I don't want to get to the point where I'm too old to not see my son do something. I think something in writing that, you know, saying, well, you know, after X amount of years that, you know, I would go see the street. Okay. There may be hope for you, Robert. But before we can get to that, you got to be able to explain this. I can tell that you're not a bad dude. Yeah, um, you speak well. I, mean, I, I, I just need some right in saying that. Um, I guess I need to say you can't make me no deals. You can't. I just need something to write and saying. 
How about this? We'll talk about this. And I will give you my word that I will go to the state attorney and I will say, he came in here, we did a little dance, but he found it in his heart to talk about this and he owned up to it. Whatever happens down the road is going to be up to them. Okay? But the problem is, is this 12 years old grown man murders her and then it's like I didn't do it I don't know nothing about nothing they will absolutely put you to death told you what I'd do for you. I would tell that state attorney. He came in here, he mm -hmm. talked to me. Well, okay, you telling him that, I mean, that's, that's, that's still not telling me or guaranteeing me anything as far as I'm saying it's free. And, and I can't do that for you, brother. I can't guarantee you anything. I'm not going to sit in here and lie to you and tell you that I can't. I can look at you and I can tell you're struggling with this. Mm -hmm. I want to help you get it off your shoulders. And I want to help you. Well, can you talk to him first? And ask him what? I mean... I'm, I'm not in no position whatsoever to try to bargain with anything. Like I said, I just want to be able to get out and see my son or something. So, I mean, if he's, you know, if he, I mean, I, I know they want whatever they can get or give to me because this is a child. I can tell you this, if you don't get right, you'll never see the light of day. I understand that, too. I understand that. So it's either you're going to roll the dice and try to play and see what happens, and your little boy will never see his father. Let's just start from the beginning. I need, I need something. I mean, I know you say you can't promise me anything, but I mean, like I said, I just, I mean, the child is dead. So there's, like I said, there's no guarantee that, you know, they will have any kind of sympathy or mercy on me regardless of how I present myself or whatever I may say on me. I mean, there's, there's no guarantee they will have sympathy on me. That I can still very well be, get the death penalty. I would say that, or spend the rest of my life in prison. Yeah, I don't do you want to be executed? No. Okay. No, I don't. I wouldn't either. for me is a little cooperation and good faith. To show this mother some closure.
time, 20 years yet. I mean, I mean, I know that may not mean shit to a lot, but like I said, I mean, so what do you think like, her life was worth? Her life was worth, well, worth more than 25 years. How do you think that I, me, can promise you 20 years? And, and, and I can't. You say you can't. And I can't. But the thing, I say the thing of these, I want to say, can you just, you can talk to him first. He's willing to sit down and talk. I'll sit down and talk to him myself. I mean, I don't know how much he may listen to or how much he may get. I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably wouldn't have shit to say to me. I really want to talk. I don't know that. I mean, I know you don't understand it. You, know, you probably really, really want to, but I just need something that I can see. Like I said, I don't want to see my son on the other side of these walls for the next. Say, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it ain't nobody else's fault about what's happening. It's not anybody else's fault. No. But Robert's. That's it. Not only that, I mean, like I said, I've been dibbing and dabbing with a lot of shit, and I also got a little girl on the way that nobody knows about but me and her and a few other folks. Yolanda? No. Different one? Man, or no, that's exactly what I've been. I mean, let me help you. Help me how? Let's talk about it. I already Let's told you what I well, listen to me, Ron. I understand you tell him that, but I'm still. I, 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 I'm, I still feel like I'm never going to see the light of day. I mean, like I said, it's nobody's fault with my own, but I mean, I said, I am sorry for what happened to his child. But at the same time, I now, how though? I, I can't wrap my fucking head around it. What could have gone so bad for you to do this to this girl? Did they find the candy in her mouth? Yes. They found the candy in her mouth? Yes. Okay. What was it? It was candy. What kind of candy? I have no idea. I just know she was eating candy. Okay. You know. When she came out of the house? Um, she was eating it when she approached me. She was eating it. Um, you gotta speak up because I'm about fucking half deaf. So she comes out of the house eating candy. Were you sitting in your car? Coming out of your house? I need help. I mean, I, I need some kind of help. I need to, I mean, yeah. Who is this you say you were going to talk to? The state attorney. Is there anywhere I can talk to the state attorney? Probably not at four o'clock in the morning. I understand. Three o'clock in the morning. morning, but at whatever the earliest convenience that if he will. We probably make something happen. No, we're gonna have to talk about this. She comes out of the house eating candy. Oh, I, I need to talk to him first. I need to talk to him. If I can talk to him, I mean, I know we need to talk about this, but if I can talk to him, I will talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. I really need to talk. Just a minute.
I just taught the cat and I think he called the state attorney. So they're going to come down. What happened when she came outside? Can I take you in here? That's all okay. I might have started talking about it now. I'm not trying to run a game on you. I've been up front, honest with you the whole time. I understand that. Got to show remorse to even have an absolute chance to not spend the rest of your life in prison. Thank you. you have got to show some remorse. Yeah, I'm, listen to me, Robert. I'm not trying. I'm not here to pass judgment on you, to belittle you, talk down to you, anything like that. You're a grown man. Okay. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. What I would like to do is have some answers, because that's what her mama deserves. I mean, a human being, some compassion. What happened when she came out of the house?
be outside when they were walking the dog. No. You just happen to see her coming back outside? Not right outside. You were? Where were you at? It just came down the steps. Okay. Did she come out the door? She had came out and she spoke. Oh man. She gone. She said she didn't like my shoes. She liked your shoes? Oh, thank you. And she said something that I didn't understand. I didn't, I was, you know, you know. So I said, what did you say? She was like, that. Went on to my car. I got two hours out of my trunk. She was in the hospital in Memphis, where? And I came back out. She went to my charger, went to the car, and she said it again. And I asked her what she said. She told me you heard. I said, no, I didn't. What did you say? She was like, well, where's Lauren? I said, Lauren's at work. She said, can I come in with you? And I told her no. And she couldn't come in. She kept on, can I let her come over? I let her come over. I kept telling her no. She walked over to the steps. I was going up the steps. And she said, I'm coming in. And I said, I did not. The further I went up, the further she came and go. When I make it to the door, she's at the top of the steps. And I tell her to go back home. Go home. Go home. She stands there and she's like, why can't I come in? Why can't I come in? I said, because you can't. You don't need to be over here. Leave. Starts back down the steps, closes the door, I lock the door. She knocks on the door. I answer the door and I ask her to leave again. As I walk back out on the balcony because I didn't want no one to get the reception that I was trying to lure her in or drawing her in. I walk back out on the balcony. There's not no one in sight, no one. And I was like, you know, and on any particular day, there'd be a hundred people around right here. But in this instance, there's no one here. So, I walk back to the end of the balcony, and you know, I tell her just to go home. Again, go home. So she starts down the steps like she's going to leave. So when I turn around, she comes back again. When she comes back again this time, she walks all the way up on me like she's trying to brush up against me, telling me I'm scared of her. I'm like, I'm not scared of you, I just need you to leave. If something happened and somebody say something, and then you got a problem. Right. There ain't gonna be no problem. There ain't gonna be no problem. So I don't go back to the house. I, I don't even go back in the apartment. I go some of the steps. And I'm trying to wait on her just to leave because I don't want no problems about her being around that door. Right. So when I go get up and I go throw some in the garbage, she comes right over to the garbage can where I am. Walk back up the steps. Walk back in the house. She's coming back up the steps. She comes to the door. So when she gets to the door, I stand at the door and talk to her. She stands there and she's making gestures to my, can she come in? Can she come in with me? I said, no, you can't come in. I said, because we're going to get in trouble. If you come in here, we're going to get in trouble. She coming on to you a little bit? She's trying to. God. She grabbing on you at all? Grabbing your dick? No, 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 she hadn't grabbed me, but she's getting coming really close to me. Right. You know, she's, coming, she's coming really, really close. And so, you know, um, 
she was still standing at the door. And she's like, you know, I'm about paranoid because, you know, I know I have this over my head and we got this 12 year old girl standing at the door. And, you know, so she still trying to come in. By now she's like in the doorway trying to come in. And I still want her to come in. And so as I extend my arm to push her back out of the doorway, she pushes my arm down and like pushes me, try to push me back. I, I ain't going to say she try to push me back out of the way, but she like, if I, slap her, if I slap her arm down, she like try to push me back. Right. Not saying she was trying to force her way in, but she tried to push me back. Okay, so when she tried to push me back, I slap her arm down again. You know, I'm gonna stop, quit. So, this time, She's, I want to say it was gum she's eating. And she says something under her breath. And I'm like, what did you say? And she was like, don't worry about it. So she's still standing there. So right when I close the door, she grabs the knob, tries to open it. I said, get away from the door. Just let you get away from the door. And when she leaves, I turn around and close the door again. She knocks again. She knocks and finally I open it. She comes in. And she never leaves, never goes no further in the front door. And she's making gestures, sexual gestures. Like what? Can she see the dick? Um, she can handle the dick. You know, she got a boyfriend that's 15 and this, that, and other. I'm like, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You know, I really don't. And at this time is when she didn't grab my dick, but she grabbed it like my shirt, the bottom of my shirt, like she was trying to. And so when I grabbed the wrist, told her to stop, look, seriously, you need to leave. And so it's like she's trying to snatch away, like she's, you know, trying to fight back. And she's, Keep it on, keep it on. And I just, I really didn't mean for things to go the way they did. I didn't try to hurt the child. But before I realized I had choked her out. How, just around the just neck? Around the neck. I choked her out around the neck. And I said I didn't really mean for it to happen. I didn't mean to do it. You know, I heard when she was found. That's why I said I don't, I would really like for them to take a DNA test because they said when she was found, she didn't have on no bottom. She was fully dressed. She was fully dressed. I never took any of her clothes off. I never took anything anywhere. She was fully dressed. I took both of her. She had, um, slides. Mm -hmm. I even took her slides and left them with her. At the creek? Yes. I said, I don't, all this stuff, my, you know, she didn't have no bottoms and stuff like that. I don't know nothing about that. I choked her out, yes. I'll admit that I did choke her out, but I did not. That's why I stressed them, do a DNA test. No, do this, do this last second. No, did I have sex with her in my car? No, I didn't do any of that. Did you have sex with her upstairs? No, I didn't have sex with her anyway. I mean, obviously, she's a good looking little 12 year old. But that that sex with her was not anywhere my intention. I mean, obviously, I, she was coming on to you. She wants to see your dick. And, that's what she said, but I, that's not me. Yeah. I understand. That's what it is. I mean, I mean she's trying to give you some yeah, pussy. She's but trying I, to give I, you but some that's, pussy. that's not what I wanted from a 12 year old. Okay. That's not what I wanted from a 12 year old. I mean, look, I, I'm not trying to pass judgment on you or nothing like that. She comes up to your house back and forth a couple times. She obviously gets in there. She's flirting with you. I get it. I get it. You know, she's grabbing at your shirt. Let me see your dick. I can handle it. So she, she comes in. Yeah. She jack you off? No. She nothing, suck y'all. Nothing. Nothing, nothing like that. That's why I, that's why I said I want them to try to, you know, do whatever DNA test they can. That's why I didn't object to having the swab done or any of that because I never did anything sexual with her. 
I mean, what, what pushed it to the point of, I mean, was it like playing around? It, no, it, it, with me, it's, it really, I mean, just made you snap? This just really, really pissed me off because I'm trying to tell the child, Lee, I already know I have this kind of shit on my head. I know sex friendly shit is some serious shit. I mean, you have to be very careful about whatever you do, but and it's pissing me off because, okay, you're doing this, but you don't, you don't know. Mm -hmm how this is making me feel. I'm pissed because, okay, here is a 12 year old child. Now I'll just say somebody walked in. Lauren walks in. Her mom just, no, somebody see her walking, her mom walks in. Okay, and they see her and the first thing they're gonna say is, what you doing with my daughter in here? Mm -hmm. I don't have your daughter. Okay. So you, you grab her by the neck, just shove her against the wall or shove her against the door or, or what, while you were choking in the corner of the wall corner of the wall behind the door in the corner and I mean I guess at some point she went out yeah then what happened when she went out um, I, said, I, I thought she was just they just blacked out but I had choked her pretty damn good to the point where she wasn't breathing how long do you think you choked her for I don't even know I seriously don't know okay I really don't and she goes out, and then you're like, oh, fuck, realize yeah, what had happened. No, then what? At first, I'm thinking that she's kind of bullshitting just to, and so when I see that she's not bullshitting, I, I really just panic from that point. You know, um, what did yeah. you wrap her in? I didn't wrap her in anything. Okay. Um, Where'd you put her? She's in the car. Where at? In the back seat. In the back seat. Yeah. So you grab her, carry her downstairs, and put her in the back seat. Yeah. I honestly, I didn't know what to do. I felt if I tried to take her to the hospital, you know, it would say that I, you know, that I'm. This is a, this is what I was afraid of. If I took her to the hospital, I would end up here. Right. Because okay, a sex offender brought this young girl to the hospital, dead or whatever. So, I feel like I just had to, you know, try to get rid of the body. Okay. So, so you leave the house. Where do you go? Bruton. Okay. I, you know, I ride to Bruton, not having any intention on leaving. I'm really trying to figure out what I need to do. Right. Uh, I ride and try to figure out what I need to do. Um, you know. But you know, know that you got to go to work, right? Yeah. Yeah. I go to Bruton. I don't know what I need to do. I'm scared because I've, I've never physically hurt anybody to the point of this, mm -hmm. you know. Even when I've had fights with guys, I've never, you know, hurt, killed, damn near killed, anything. I ride the broom just trying to figure out what I need to do, what I need to do, what I need to do. Did you call anybody? Um, I, I think I, I want to say I talked to your laundry. Like I said, I did talk to her before she went to the funeral. You know, like I said, I was just really just trying to talk to anybody that I can try to talk to to try to calm myself because I, I didn't understand. know what to do. I understand. Um, um, I passed a coworker of mine, Jeff. I passed him and um, called him and he asked me, um, it was like about 2.40. And um, I told him, I said, um, he said he was headed to work and I said, well, I had to go to the house, which I went to my house like I always do. I had to go to the house and check on something. So I went to the house. You know, I walked in the house and I sat on my bed for a minute. Did you bring her in the car? No, I didn't. Left her in the car? I had to left her in the car. I just I left her in the car. I knew I couldn't get her out. I wouldn't have needed trying to take her. Like I told him earlier, where my house is, there's nothing blocking anything from my front door or my back door. So if I tried to take her out, somebody would see me. I just left her in the car. You know. I sat on my bed for a minute trying to think of what I need to do, what I need to do. Do I need to call somebody? Do I just need to just fuck it? And so I was like, well, go back to Pensacola. You know, go back to Pensacola. So I called Jeff, told him, look, I'll be back, which I did have to get my rain gear and my boots and stuff because I didn't have none of that. But when that happened, I just as fast as I could and try to get her out to the car. Let me ask you this before we go. 
did you think to yourself, if I fucking drop this chick off up here in Bruton, that they would know who the fuck it was? Did that cross your mind? Or? No, it didn't cross my mind. I just didn't know what to do. Okay. I just so really you get didn't in the know car. What to do. So I get in the car. I come you back. You go back to Pensacola. I come back to Pensacola. I um, come all the way back to the house. Come back to the apartment. I go in the apartment, and the whole time I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this body. Um, I go upstairs and I get my stuff together, and I come back. Um, when I come back down, um, I see the ladies walking. So I um, throw my raincoat in the car in the back seat. Throw my boots in the back on the floor. Um, Who did you see walking? Uh, uh, Naomi's mom and another. What were they doing? Um, Naomi's mom was on the phone, the other lady was just walking with her, and the lady, she stopped me and asked me, say, have you seen a little girl? And when she asked me that, my heart just sank. Because you knew they were I already knew what they were looking for. And she's in your back seat. She's back there, in my back seat dead. And I'm like, well, I mean, I can't tell them that she's in my back seat dead. I mean, you know, so I said, no, ma'am, I haven't. She, um, Naomi's mom was like, well, it's my little girl. So you know my little girl, I guess, man. And she was like, you know, saying she don't, she, at that point she was like, I don't know what time she went missing. She like, her brother doesn't even know. So he was standing out there with her. He was like, she, he don't even know when she left. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to get away as fast as I can because I don't need him to walk over to my car. Right. So you get in your car? I get in my car. Back on the work. Okay. Back on the work. Did you tell anybody at work? No. I didn't tell anybody at work. There's only one other guy that works with me. Well, there was another guy there that night that was doing some stuff with the um, pneumonia cars that he had to steam clean or something. Yeah. All right, so you get off work, jump in the car, head back to Pensacola. Head back to Pensacola. Um, yeah, I don't know where Pensacola, I'm thinking. You know, I got to find something to do with this body. You know, I can't leave it here. You know, it's, you know, it's gonna smell. And somebody's gonna find it. Um, and I tried to think of everything I could think of, and I just kept coming my initial. Um, you know, when I finally just decided, okay, I got to dump it somewhere. I just got to dump it, but I didn't know where. You know, I said, well, I can't take it to. You know. Put it in no dumpster nowhere because it's easy to be found. I said, well, you know, so I, my initial thought was to just keep going 29 south, you know, just as far as I can just make myself go and just find somewhere just to, to dump the body out. But I was like, well, fuck it, I'll turn here. And, you know, I guess that's whatever street that is. I went down and way down just trying to find somewhere to try to dump his body but you know, I'm just, you know, I'm scared to get out I'm scared to stop I'm scared of being seen so I really don't know what to do I ride all the way back around you know to the curb where it gets to the interstate turn around and come back up and come back up and I take the right where the bridge is and I see it and I'm thinking well Maybe here is a good place, but then again, I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know how this bridge flows, where it flows to. Then I know this company is right next door, so I'm like, well, man, it may, it might be found. You know, um, so the car comes. I pull on up long round, long round, and I drive down into the neighborhood and. Turn around and come back out. And, you know, I slowed down again, but I didn't stop. You know, I turned like they said, pulled up in the driveway, back back out. Once the car was gone, and once the car was gone, I got out and took her body and dumped it in the water. Did you throw it over the rail or around the side? And and over the rail. Threw it over the rail. Okay. She hit the water and then you jumped back in the car. And and she she hit the water. I got in the car and. Went back to the apartment. I sat there and I didn't sleep. 
At least I didn't thought about me. What the fuck have I done? I mean, so when you brought her outside, you carried her. You didn't have to drag her or anything. No, I didn't have to drag her. Okay. So you work with duct tape at all at work or anything like that? No. Did you put a bag around her head or anything? No, I didn't like that? put anything around her head. Okay, because she's got duct tape stuck to her hair. I don't know, but well, like I said, I mean, I heard that she didn't have any bottoms on. I she didn't. That's no, okay, but that's what I'm saying. I didn't have nothing to do with that. That's why I, I want them to do a DNA you know, okay. for that to prove that I had nothing to do with that and it probably really won't make a fuck now because the child is dead. Regardless, they probably still won't look at it like that. You know, but... Did you stab her at all? No. It looks like she's got stab marks in her neck. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't stab her. I didn't... The only thing I did was choke her. Okay. And that was that. You gotta have sex with her? No, I didn't. That's why, like I said, I want them to do this DNA test. Too. No, for that purpose. Be honest with you, it looks like you cut her pussy out. What? Like I said, I didn't. That wasn't me. I said, I'm telling you everything that I've done. Everything that I've done. I didn't touch her sexually at all. No way, no form. I said, when I heard that she didn't have no bottles on, they found her. He worried the fuck out of me because I said, well, if they do find out, they're going to say, I did. I'm already accused of a sex offender. But I, well, how do you think her bottoms would come off? I don't know. I, I, I'm telling you. I'm telling. I'm telling you a story. I'm talking. I mean, it, it, I don't know. Bro, it's not gonna matter one way or another. Whether you had sex with her, I, I or, didn't or, or not. I, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm telling you, and I'm letting you honestly know. Okay. All shit aside, I did not touch her sexually. Not at all. No, I did not. That's why, I, like I say, you know, I didn't touch her sexually. Like I just, no, like you said, like I just told you. You know, it probably ain't gonna make a fuck to them. You know. Well, I mean, it, it, where we're at now, it, I'd like to see honesty. I'm being honest with you. I okay. do not because it, it, it's not gonna matter not. one way or another. But what it does matter is if you're being honest on down the road, it may look like, well, he fucking lied about that shit. If you had sex with her, you had sex with her. It ain't no, no fucking big deal. You know, if I you took your pant, her pants off and you know. Whatever. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I did not have sex with her. I didn't stab her. I didn't have sex with her. That's what I'm saying. You know, it was like it's blood on the car. And I don't know what that can be from because she wasn't bleeding. She didn't have any injuries? Mm -hmm. Nothing? Blood, nothing like that? Mm -hmm. She wasn't bleeding from the nose, the mouth, or anything. Um, no, there was no blood outside. So I don't know where. Just when he was... Um, I forget his name, the guy that was in here earlier, he was saying that, you know, he said that you found blood, but like I said, I don't know where that came from. There's some kind of blood on your car. Because she, she wasn't bleeding she at all. Bleeding. No. She wasn't bleeding at all. sound coming off with the story and stuff I mean I, I believe what you're saying but I also believe that you're holding back just a little bit on far yeah, as any exactly. kind of sexual contact there was no sexual contact and, and the reason I say this is because I could tell Naomi wanted it I mean she come up there following you she made comments to you out in the parking mm -hmm. lot she followed you upstairs she went down the stairs she come back upstairs she hung out for a little bit trying mm -hmm. to get in your door She's flirting with you. She brushes up against with you. Mm -hmm. Says that she can take your dick. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Wanting to see it. Mm -hmm. Grabbing your shirt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you gave it to her. I never did anything sexual with her. Did you show it to her? No. Come on. I'm lying now. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I mean, hell, I have told you. Basically, they had him kill the child, but did. I mean, I didn't, I did nothing. not rape him, no, nothing, nothing. I didn't try to kill her. I honestly didn't try to kill her. And I, no, I say I have no kind of sexual desire to be with a 12 year old. I mean, probably not at the time, but I mean, because she acts like she's 
17, 18. That, wouldn't she, you agree she that said, she acts? I mean, I mean the way, yeah, the way she came on, the shit that she said, yeah. She's talking but, all a bunch of shit. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, you, to tell me that, you know, you got a 15-year-old boyfriend and you can take his dick so you know you can take mine, I mean, you don't know me like that. You've never, you know, I've never been exposed to you, nor have you been exposed to me, so, I mean, why are you even saying something like this to me? Right. You know, I understand what you're trying to do. Even if you ain't trying to do nothing, I mean, maybe she was just talking shit to see if she could see my dick. I mean, I don't know. But I didn't show it to her. And I didn't do anything to her sexually. Like I say, I mean, everything was with her when I dumped her. And they said they found her, she didn't have any bottoms. And like, you know, it worried me. I'm like, okay, with well, this getting back, but well, damn, you know, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. And then you talking about duct tape. No, don't work with duct tape at all at work. I said, we're in the engine. You no, know, we're going to go over to your apartment, and we're going to check, like, around and see if there's any that's, that's fine. semen stains, anything like that, that's on fine. the floor. You know, I mean, if she gave you some head, she gave you some head. I mean, that's that's fine, but Just a little she, bit. she, no, not even a little bit. But we never did nothing. She and I never did nothing. She and I never did nothing. Okay. So let me just run it back. You're outside. You came home. Warren was at work. You already dropped her off at work. She comes out the door. She comes over, speaks to you a little bit. You say hi back. She comments on your shoes. She starts flirting with you a little bit. You kind of back off a little bit, go upstairs. She follows you upstairs. The little courting thing goes on for a minute. She ends up coming inside. Mm -hmm. So is that, in a nutshell, comes inside. What was it that she said to you that, that made you mad? It's just that she kept trying to, like she kept trying to advance. It's like even when I would tell her no, no, she would try to grab like something. She was reaching like for my dick, and I would slap her hand down. It's just like it made her try just that much more. Right. I mean, even though she was laughing, it was pissing me off because I did not want to be caught up in that situation. Like mm -hmm. I said, just like I said, if her mom pulled up and somebody seen her over there, like your daughter up there. So now she come up, she ain't got no understanding. All she knows is her daughter's up there with an older man. You know, so she don't, I mean, then it's like, well, what's going on here? And it can easily be saying, well, you know, I don't know what the fuck she would have said. You know, if she would have just, I doubt she would have been honest about it. You know, say if, if even if she, she didn't laugh at you or nothing, tell you you had a little dick. No. Made her mad, made you mad. And just, just her keep trying to advance, and like I said, it pissed me off because I didn't want to be caught up in that situation. And like I said, you know, I you just, just snap, got her by the throat, and, you know, took it too far. Sure, it wasn't kind of sexual no. shit, fantasy. No, I don't even get into that shit, and anybody that I've ever dealt with can tell you that. Just old straight lawn sex. Girl, the girl that got the little girl by Lauren. Um, Girl, I've ever done. We can tell you, I don't do that shit. You know, we just straight out sex. You know, whatever position, but all those choking and all the other shit, I don't do that. Shit. That. Goddamn, you, know, you ain't no fun. I mean, that's not like that shit. Takes I'm just fucking with. Help, man. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I want to spend my life. Hold on. 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 Hold Told your story. I can tell it bothers you. But tell me. I mean. Let me tell you what would have been bad. What would have been bad if you stuck to your fucking bullshit and said you don't know nothing about nothing and we proved it wrong and the jury gets up there and sees what was done to that little girl because, I mean, obviously her pants are missing. It looked like you cut her vagina out. So I never touched a child. Okay. Well, whether it's animals or whatever, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But it looks like you took a knife and cored her out. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not, you know, 
not that, no, that doesn't even miss. What do you do at work? I ain't got nerve. I just, um, me and a guy, we're both, you know, um, trained to drive, so we rotate every two days, um, two days. What, are you an engineer on train? I thought y'all fix cars or something. They show. do. We set it up for them to fix cars in the morning. Okay. On first shift, we work, we set up everything at night. So, so you just back the train around, back the cars yeah. up, that kind so of thing? I say some nights, I say two nights I may drive and then we rotate it. I got to walk the ground for the two nights. He'll drive while I walk the ground for two nights and get everything together. Everything told me the truth? Yes, sir. You feel better about now? I mean, I hate it yeah. If I can go back and do it all over again, I would. I can just leave her ass there knocking. I understand.
in just a minute.
What's up, man? Stand up for me, man. <laughs> 